I came over to uh, meet with a number of my European colleagues uh, to talk about uh, where things stand in the negotiations and what our plans are for this year. I think it's always important to sort of start at the fundamentals, and I think if you start at the fundamentals, there's an enormous amount of, uh, of commonality uh, of purpose and uh, commonality of, uh, of view as between the U.S. Uh, and the EU. I think we both uh, recognize the, uh, the gravity of the issue uh, and both are committed in a whole number of ways uh, to, uh, to dealing with it. Uh, I think that there was disappointment uh, in, in many quarters uh, after Copenhagen. Uh, I think there was a great deal less of that uh, in, uh, after Cancun. It was a very different story in 2010, and I think people were quite determined to try to put the, put the, the system back, you know, sort of put the pieces back together to, uh, to be able to make progress and to uh, and conceptualize what could happen in a more pragmatic and realistic way. And I think that helps, frankly, because that is the world that we're living in with respect to climate negotiations. Obviously, we're not part of the Kyoto Protocol. There's a lot of talk about the Kyoto Protocol still, but uh, the Kyoto Protocol, you know, covers 27, 28 percent, something like that, of global emissions. The, the pledges in, in, in Cancun and Copenhagen cover, I think, over 80 percent of global emissions. So I think that there's a lot of progress. I don't think this is just a question of what the U.S. is doing or can do. I think this is a question of, uh, of what a whole set of countries, including China and, and many others, are, uh, are prepared to do. Both.